morning and welcome to our service of worship today. Today's service will be mostly music and we will also celebrate the Eucharist together. And now Ross will lead us in the invocation. Lord, we've come this morning seeking your Spirit's presence, but it's hard to settle in when so many things cloud our minds. Even in your house, it's hard to pay attention. We are trusting that you will get our attention through some songs sung, through some scriptures read, and some words spoken. Come, Spirit of God, lift us up to open our hearts to your unconditional love. Grace, grace, God's grace. Is God's grace sufficient for you? Grace, grace, God's grace. Does grace give you the strength you need today? Did God's grace wake you up this morning? Did God's grace start your, on your way today? Will God's grace help you love those you encounter today? Then let's worship the God of grace and glory, who is always faithful. Last week, you may remember, I asked you what you would want to say if you had Jesus over for dinner. Um, today, I want you to maybe take some time and reflect about what it, does it mean uh, for the one who says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So hear the words of Jesus Christ. Come to me, all who labor and are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. We seek the rest Jesus offers, for we are often anxious and truly afraid. But Jesus invites us, take my yoke upon you and learn much from me. There is so much we want to learn about living. We want our lives to count for something. And Jesus assures us, I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So in a harsh world, we long for kindness we can trust and rest that is truly refreshing. Again, Jesus promises, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us find in Jesus the true freedom and the joy of living according to his spirit we find within us. And let us reflect on that matter. Holy and eternal God, we give thanks for the gifts you have given each of us, gifts of ministry in so many different forms, such as friends, as partners, as parents, as children, as neighbors. We pray for your Spirit's presence in all the places where people gather for worship. May we be moved to live our lives faithfully, working for justice, living for peace, 
celebrating love wherever it is found. Thank you for the blessings we have experienced. Let us not grow weary of living in your way, a calling out for your presence and peace in our lives. Spirit of God, fall fresh on us as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
The scripture is taken from the ninth chapter of Matthew, verses 9 through 11. As Jesus went out from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? I'm reading from the scripture of Luke, chapter 15, verses 1 through 7. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulder and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Let's prepare our hearts and our minds for the Eucharist. And let us pray. Gracious God, we approach your throne with a broken spirit and a contrite heart, thanking you for the freedom and opportunity to worship and praise you. We thank you for your unswerving grace and mercy. Cleanse our hearts and renew a steadfast spirit within us today. Help us to walk in love, as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us. Help us, Holy Spirit, and teach us to have a strong love for one another, enabling us to effect change in the world in which we live. Fill our hearts with patience and with love and acceptance and understanding toward one another. Teach us to let love be our greatest aim. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So the Lord be with you, and I know your response is, and also with you. Lift up our hearts, and I know your response at home is, we lift them up unto the Lord. So let us give thanks to the Lord our God, for it is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, we praise you. Let the heavens be joyful and the earth be glad. We bless you for creating the whole world and for your promises to your people, Israel, and for Jesus Christ, in whom your faithfulness dwells. Born of Mary, he shares our life. Eating with sinners, he welcomes us. Guiding his children, he leads us. Visiting the sick, he heals us. And dying on the cross, he saves us. Risen from the dead, he gives us new life. 
living with you, he prays for us. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with choirs of angels who forever sing to the glory of your name. It's interesting that just perhaps 20 years after the Last Supper celebration recorded in the scriptures, the Apostle Paul writes this in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four. <clears throat> he says, For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, says Paul, took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And said, this is my body, which is for you. So do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving a blessing, he says, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. We are to eat this as the bread of life. New life in Jesus Christ. And share the cup in his name. And so now, dear Lord, we give you thanks. <clears throat> For you have touched our soul. You have loved us, dear God, from the moment of our first waking. And you have held us in times of joy and grief. Stay with us, we pray. May the Spirit of Christ, his grace, be with us, present to us. For the fullness of our own humanity. Dear Lord, help us in the week ahead to claim our strength and our need, our awesome and fragile beauty, that encouraged by the truth we might work to restore compassion to the human family and renew the face of the earth in the power of the spirit of the crucified and risen Christ, who taught us to pray together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs>
Now let us affirm our faith together. We believe in God whose care for rightness and goodness preserved the world from utter destruction and who has promised us a new world beyond this one, one that will make all our struggles worthwhile. We believe in Jesus Christ, the one who died to make the new world a reality and who in the triumph of his resurrection calls us to spread the gospel of that new world. We believe in the Holy Spirit of Christ, his presence among us now, who empowers us to live with dedication and sacrifice and love in the old world, helping it to become new. We believe in the church as the fellowship of Christ followers, worshiping and learning, teaching and growing, until we have taken upon us the image of the Master and become his representatives in the world. And we believe in the coming together as we have today to sing, to humble ourselves in prayer and meditation, to listen to the word, to class one another when available in our homes, in our community, to class one another in the warmth of fellowship as a foretaste of the new world that is coming through the power of the risen Spirit of Christ. Amen. And now in closing, may I wish you the peace of Christ. And I know your response is, may the peace of Christ be with you as well. Just a few thoughts. I have to admit, it is increasingly difficult to celebrate the Eucharist and not be terribly troubled by how the church and our community is so divided over the events taking place in our country. The Eucharist is supposed to build community. It celebrates loving and sharing. The Eucharist is to be marked by humble service and self-sacrifice. The Eucharist is to be a bulwark against racism and tribalism. Over the years when I do the Lord's service or the Eucharist or Holy Communion, I'm reminded of the passage in Hebrews that says about a great cloud of witnesses. There is a great cloud of witnesses down through the centuries who have celebrated this Holy Supper in remembrance of the sacrifice of Jesus, who is our Christ. I'm also reminded of, of one of the um, creeds, the fourth century creed called the Nicene Creed. Article 10. See if I can tell you what it is in Latin. It goes, Credo, Sanctum, Ecclesiam, Catholicum, Sanctorum, Communiorum. Interesting. It says, I believe in the Holy Universal Church and the communion of saints. That communion is broken these days. I'm sure you know that. I don't care what your political stripe is or your preference. But two things we know for sure. One, that we are attacked by a virus, COVID. That is killing nearly three or 4,000 every single day. A virus that's wearing a mask is so politicized it's hard to comprehend. We're not wearing a mask makes you a political stripe. Wearing a mask makes you another political tribe. That's crazy. We should know that. We do know that. There is another virus in our country today. Just as deadly spiritually, emotionally, psychologically. 
Like you, I was shocked <coughs> when the people stormed the uh, White House trying to stop a normal transition of power. He put it on it for nearly two centuries. And inside the White House was a rebel flag. Think about that for a minute. Flag has never been inside the White House. I mean, the uh, our Congress. <coughs> Thousands of lives were sacrificed on both sides to prevent racism from spreading to the Western states. It was shocking to see some of the T-shirts on those who were rampaging through our Capitol building. One read an insignia which stood for six million is not enough. Let that sink in a little bit. People running through the Capitol building saying six million is not enough. It was that same building where a war was declared upon a nation that tried to do away with six million. And the sacrifices that were done to try and prevent that. Also shocking was to see someone with a sign on a t-shirt and, and other things that said uh, Arbeit macht Freiheit. I visited some of the concentration camps in Dachau, and I saw, I remember seeing the signs over Auschwitz. Work means freedom. It's hard to believe that a country can be so divided that we can still be so racist and tribal in our thinking. I'm reminded of the ancient creed of the fourth century, the Nicene Creed, Article 10. Let me read you what it says in Latin. Credo, sanctum, Ecclesium, Catholicum, Sanctorum, Communiorum. I believe in the universality of the church. And the communion of saints. We need to think about that. We need to ask ourselves, how can we as a church be agents of reconciliation? How we can be ones who repair in our thinking, in our interactions, the damage that is being done. There's a sign not too far from here, someone's front lawn, I won't repeat the words, and it says how he hates effing Biden. That's just crazy talk. Let's pray. Let's reflect. Let's think about who we are and followers of Jesus. My friend, my dear friend, Jared always says to me, um, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus think? Good question to ask. Anyway, what's new in the life of the church? 
session just met, and we have decided, they have decided, and voted, that we, would back, we will be back to live services beginning the first Sunday of February. And by then, I think we have our live stream set up. In case there are those who want to stay home, they can still watch the service. It will be um, taped live as we do it. However, um, my caution to some of those in the, some of the kids and some of the communicants and uh, Jared and uh, Denise, um, you can't do do-overs. <laughs> we can't tell the congregation, oh, stop, we've got to rewind and do this over. So um, it'll be an interesting time as we get back to this new form of worship uh, for our church members and our community. And we look forward to getting back together with you. We also have decided that we are going to select uh, some of our um, communicants, if they want, uh, to be uh, youth representatives on the session, two, and one uh, on the deacons. So we will be calling upon our youth and talking about that in the future. Keep in mind all of those that we have been praying for. Also keep in mind um, Joyce and Bonnie Sanders. Joyce has been in the hospital and now he's home. And Bonnie tells me that uh, he is going to be under hospice care. I'll be going to see him this afternoon, and I'll offer him our prayers and our concern that he may be strengthened in these difficult days. Last but not least, um, let's not forget your financial support for the mission and ministry of our church. We are grateful for some of the donations that have come in to help us um, help us with the expense of some of the work that needed to be done on our furnace and air conditioning unit. And of course, um, maybe we'll show you before this service ends, Ross, um, the men that came together and uh, took part of this apart and hauled the organ down the aisle out the front door and some of the pipes that are going to be fixed. And uh, maybe when it comes back, we will have a concert where our uh, violinist and cellist and Ross can uh, entertain us with some great music, maybe some Sunday evening or Sunday afternoon. Ross doesn't know that. He's learning it right now, as I suggested. But that's what we hope for. Thank you for your ongoing support. Thank you for your financial support. Thanks those for your prayers. Send your cards, make calls. You do have the prayer list given by Shirley. So now may the spirit of the living God be with you. Watch over you these difficult days. May you sense that spirit of Christ over you, around you, beneath you, to uphold you. And let me remind you that the spirit of the living Christ is within you. And let it remind you every morning that you are loved unconditionally. Amen. Amen.